All right, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the number one thing I do to almost every single one of my 3D renders to help give it that finished, polished, refined, professional look, and that's diffusion. So let's get into it. So for starters, what is diffusion? Diffusion is a softening of your image that's usually caused by bright spots, blooms, blowouts, things like that. But they're basically lens effects, basically artifacts that happen in the photographic process that can be used to help enhance the mood of an image or just make something look a little bit more photorealistic. The most obvious use case of this was in early silent films when they would rub Vaseline or other greasy substances over the lens to help make an image look kind of blown out and soft and romantic and whatever emotion they were trying to elicit there. But you can start with that as your basis for understanding what diffusion is. Now we're gonna be using it today in both Photoshop and in Nuke, but we're gonna be dialing it a little bit more lately than that. So uh, first things first, I'm gonna hop into Photoshop and show you how it's done on an image like this. So this is not a complex process. It's also very easy. It's not super scientific the way that I do it, uh, it's pretty aesthetic in its quality, but I really like the effect. Okay, so taking a look at, we'll actually start here with Little Miss Sparkle Bow Bow. So for this one, it's pretty straightforward. Like the whole image is bright and soft, so we're gonna add diffusion over top of everything. The first thing that you wanna do is you just wanna go down into your layer stack and make a duplicate of the existing layer. From there, it's just a matter of taking this layer and adding a slight blur to it. I usually use a Gaussian blur. As a starter, I almost always, I don't know why, but I almost always do like an eight pixel blur. Now you've got this blurry image over top of the non-blurry version. Now we wanna mix these together. You can do it one of two ways, basically. You can either screen them over or add them together. They're both kind of doing the same thing except for one very, very specific difference. Adding or linear dodging is just a straight math equation. The pixel value of one is added to the pixel value of another, and whatever the results are, are the results. And you can see it here where the really bright areas get super bright. Screen, on the other hand, is the same idea, but it caps it at one. It kind of, if you're looking at a curve, it kind of softens along the top. So really it's however you want to do it. Add is more literal, screen kind of helps you out, but it does cap it in, if you're going through those super bright areas. But for this one, we're going to use just a nice screen. And then we're just gonna take down the opacity of this and just kind of dial that into where we want it. Again, not a massive effect here, but just adds that little bit of softness, a little bit of polish. This is usually heavier than I would normally do it. But again, this is a doubling turned into a character on this pink thing. Like, let's make it glowy, let's make it soft, let's make it fun. So this is, a, this is the easiest and most straightforward use case where you're doing it to kind of everything. Now, what often happens is in an image like this is that you don't want to add diffusion to everything. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to right click, duplicate the layer, cool, filter. We'll do the same 8 pixel Gaussian blur on it. And then we're just going to go ahead and layer this over. Um, we're going to go and screen this back over the top. All right. And then from there, we're just going to dial this down, get it to where we want it. Now, the problem with this and doing this straight up this way is that um, it's happening everywhere. And one of the things about diffusion is that it really only happens in the brighter sides. So you want to limit it to the brights and, and, and make sure to isolate away from the darks. Because if you're doing it to the darks, it ends up just lifting it and making a little bit of a flatter, less contrasty image. So the easiest way to do it, there are ways of isolating the brights here in Photoshop. But again, just keeping it nice and simple, you can just go into this layer, we'll grab a big old soft paintbrush and just paint it out of the areas that you don't want it. I can go here and up over there. And usually I do this like around the perimeters to make sure that we're kind of focusing in on the bright area. And again, like sometimes on um, things like the like text, you don't want to create too much diffusion here because it makes it a little bit harder to read. So I'm just going to take a little bit off of there as well. So again, just a nice little softening coming in from the side and the areas that we want. Uh, again, not a, not a super scientific process here, but super easy and can really, really help add that extra effect to your work. So let's say you're not just working on a still image and you're working on an animated sequence or a film or a partial, whatever. Um, what is a common use case for that is to work in Nuke. Um, and so I'm just gonna show you that as well. So this is the stack that we're gonna be building to get a little bit of diffusion on this. And again, this is a still image, but you can set, definitely do this on uh, moving images as well. So I'll show you how to build this up. 
So you can start from the base image here. And I always, always, always start by adding a key. Here is a great node because it's going to allow you to uh, key out the luminous value, so the brighter parts of the image. Now, now when I plug this in, you're going to see that nothing actually happens. What I actually have to hit is the A for the alpha of the image, and now what we're going to do is we're going to see the alpha of this displayed in here. Um, and we'll, then what you can do is just take these sliders, and the bringing up the darks will will take up the darks, brights will do the brights, and really we're just creating a mask of the areas that we want. So if you want all the shadows, leave this down low. If you want just the super brights, bring this all the way up. But we're gonna just kind of kind of bring it into this region in here. Now what I want to do is I want to use this as an alpha to bring in some color. So for that, I'm just gonna bring in a merge node. Awesome. Um, bring in one and then the other. Gonna look through here again. Hit the A key. Let's just just look at the RGB values. And really what I want to do is I want to just isolate this inside of that. So I can just change the merging operation from over to inside. Now, if you want, if you want to switch your ABs, I'm just going to shift X to switch those. Uh, and instead of doing that as a uh, in operation, we want to do it as a mask. Totally fine. Same exact thing. I know that different people work different ways. So if you want to, if you want to use that as an in operation or a mask operation, totally fine there. All right, cool. So we got that. Now we're going to do our ever familiar, same exact thing that we did in Photoshop, is just blurring it up a little bit. Let's stick to my trusty little 8 pixel blur. Nah, this one, we'll go bigger on this one. Go up to 16. Uh, that's the thing I like about uh, Nuke is that you can always go back and change this stuff in your stack. It's a non-destructive process. And then from here, now that we've got this nice blurry image, we're going to do the exact same thing that we did in Photoshop. We're just gonna layer this back over top and we've got the same uh, merging operations. We can have screen, which again, kind of caps it at the top, or you have plus, um, which allows you to extend past one on the pixel range. Like if I hover over here, you can see that some of these values are 1.7, 1.8, where if I did uh, a screen, you, know, you can see, I'm looking down right in here. You can see that these values are capped at one. So same thing, but just different, d just depending on what you want to do. Uh, plus is really great if you're working in a dynamic pixel range outside of one. Screen is great if you want to uh, bring that in, if you're just working in like JPEGs and that kind of thing. All right, cool. So bring it back in. Now we can take this, adjust the mixing value, and just dial in. And again, like we can always go back. If I want to go back in this Luma key and bring in more areas, less areas, things like that. If you want to start dialing it in for things like uh, you know, if there's certain areas that you want to apply, you can just draw a roto around something. Totally passable. But now, but you can see, and the reason why I wanted to show this in two different pieces of software is this is not a software specific thing. You can do this in After Effects. You can do this in pretty much any, you can use in GIMP if you want to use GIMP. Um, any image manipulation tool will give you the control to do something like this. And again, I use this to a certain degree in almost every single image I've ever made. Now, even if it's like a high contrast, I'll add just like a little bit, like a two or three pixel blur and just like really like maybe 5% contribution. It just really helps a 3D image that's pixel perfect edges to have that artifacting, that blooming that you'll see from a photograph and you'll see it in your own work. I, I, I trust you to, uh, I challenge you to give it a try in your own work. And I believe that you're going to see the results of that really, really uh, prove some dividends for you. So. That's all I got today. Again, this is a quick hitter. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you back again soon.